First, let's check out the, the data model so we can um, make sure we understand what scenario we're actually dealing with here. So if I jump back into, jump into this section, you'll see here that we've got a data model made up of our fact table is our sales data. And then we've got some dates, customer information, product information, and, and regional information. So all of these tables are gonna be able to filter down here. Now, in this example, what we're gonna work through is how you can actually harvest what's called harvest a, a calculation or a selection to utilize within your uh, analysis. So the way I'm going to uh, work this example is I'm going to create, first create a table with our total sales measure. So total sales, very simple, is just a sum of total revenue. But what we wanna do is we wanna somehow add a percentage change in here because I want to see what, what are actual sales if they increase by 15%. Now, if we just wanted 15%, we could very easily just create a measure which holds 15% or 1.15 or, or whatever, whatever we like to get to that result. But what if we want to make this dynamic? What if we want to see what would happen to total sales if it increased 15 or 20% or 25%? So we need to do something slightly different there. So now we're actually going to go through how to actually complete that. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to enter data. So we have to go and create these uh, these these selections that um, you know that we want to use in our calculation. So the way we're going to do that is we can just very simply create another table. All I did was enter data and then I'm going to create another table and I'm going to say I'm going to call this uh, this column percent change. And then I'm gonna actually add the percentage change here. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go 15, 20%, 25%, and 30%. And uh, I'll call this percentage change. And then I'm gonna load that in. Now that's actually gonna load a physical table into our, into our uh, data model. So once this loads in, we'll be able to see it. Now the key thing here to remember is that this table is just a supporting table. It doesn't have any relationship. So if there is one, you have to get rid of it. And um, now we can see here that this now appears in our field section. And if we drag this into the canvas, you'll see and turn into a slicer. Now you'll see all of these, these options that we've got. The first thing to, that I do notice is that this is, uh, we actually probably wanna turn this into a percentage so we can do that very easily. Uh, we just need to come and find that column and change the format to a percentage and zero decimal points. And now we have, now we actually have these different selections that we can make. So 15, 20, 25, 30%. Now we need to somehow change this calculation based on that selection. So we have to somehow harvest this, uh, this whatever selection we make. Now, and this is a quite a common pattern, so you know this is just a simple example and hopefully you can expand on this, but the way to do that is to use the, va the values function. So uh, I'm going to call this percent selection and I'm gonna go values percent change. Now, if I select one of these and I drag this measure onto the canvas and make it a card, you'll see here that we're actually getting the result for whatever we're selecting. It's not formatted correctly, so we've obviously got to change the format here also. But this is quite cool, right? Because now we all of a sudden have this dynamic calculation that we can utilize however we like. But before we go on, we've got to, we've got to uh, work out a fix for this issue. If nothing is selected, you'll see that we get an error. So we need to make sure, we need to use a bit of logic to fix that. Now, it's not difficult logic. All it is is this. We've got to go if, has one value, that same column, so to make sure if, one, if, uh, if, if it is filtered where, and it will have one value if it is, then if that is true, then return that result. If not, return 0% change. So if nothing is selected now, we're gonna get the 0%, which is exactly what we want, which is great. Okay, so now what we can do is we can actually drag this percent selection into this table and you'll see that it's now put 25% on every single every single row here. We have run in, uh, following up into another issue and that it's, brought, it's, it's added this to, uh, to 
dates that actually don't have any sales. So we probably actually have to add some even even more logic in there. And we need in, in this case we need to go if uh, total sales is equal to blank, then we want it to equal blank. And if not, we, we want it to equal the result. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna get rid of all those values, which is great. But now we have 25% on every single row. And from here we can do, we can now create that calculation which adds in the selection. So we can create another measure and say, um, let's, let's call it total scenario sales, for example. And then all we have to do is write into quite simple logic and we need to go total sales times by one plus the percent selection. And we don't need the column name there. So we're just going to add in like so, and then we can now bring in our total scenario sales, which adds in this percent selection. So we, so this is seriously cool, right? Now we can select any of these different uh, selections in the slicer, and we get this result that changes uh, changes as we go. Now we don't even need this intermediary calculation. We can just have a look at uh, total sales versus scenario sales. Now this is just a really simple example, but think about how you could actually expand on this. You could uh, run multiple scenarios. You could, um, you could uh, grab a, a selection from a slicer, which could be anything. It could be text, it could be a text value, it could be a numeric value, and you can integrate it into your uh, model or into calculations that you're doing over um, over your models. Just think about measures, that they're virtual, right? So you can do a calculation over on top of your um, a, an actual column in a table, but then it's held uh, it's held in memory virtually. So you can really integrate anything else into that calculation. All you've got to do is create a new measure that integrates measures that are working off other um, other tables or selections that have been made in your model. So there's an incredible amount of applications there, and, and hopefully you can see that, and then you can go and apply this in something that you would, um, some analysis that you would need to do on a day-to-day -day basis.